Welcome to this Functional Skills Maths Level 1 and 2 lesson on inverse proportion. The thing to be aware of on this video is that this topic and video is specifically for Level 2 students. The learning outcomes are to understand and calculate inverse proportion. The linked learning links to proportions and ratios which we've covered in the previous videos to this week's session. The main point to remember is that when we've come across ratios so far, for example, Pete's wonderful cake in the ratio of 3 to 2, flour to sugar, Whenever we had a total or we were given something on the parts ratio, we used the scale. So let's just say Pete has 150 grams of flour. Then in order to calculate our scale, 150 divided by 3 gave us a scale of 50. And we multiply the other side by the same number to work out we need 100 grams of sugar. inverse proportions is going to do something slightly different where the scale is still the same instead of multiplying both sides we're going to do the opposite on the other side and we'll explain why in a minute so inverse proportions are, is basically saying as one thing gets bigger the other thing gets smaller so we're changing the ratio relationship instead of doing the same to both sides we're going to do something different where one side gets bigger the other side is going to get smaller let's show you in a practical way what we mean if it takes two builders 10 days to dig a hole then how long would it take one builder so we've got a relationship between builders and the number of days it's going to take to do the job and what I do know is that two builders take 10 days that's the strap line for my ratio this is my header okay now how long will it take one builder so I'm going from two builders to one so I'm dividing by two now if you reduce the number of builders you would expect the number of days to increase so if I have less builders it's going to take a longer time so instead of dividing by 2 we multiply by 2 so one builder would take 20 days and this is what we mean by an inverse proportion if we make something bigger on one side the other side gets smaller if we make something smaller on one side, the other side gets bigger. Let me show you with another example. So instead of reducing the number of builders and increasing the length of time, let's have a look at one where we increase the number of builders to four. So we know there's a relationship between builders and days, and we know it takes two builders 10 days to dig this hole. Now this time, if I increase the number of builders, so I've got a scale of 2, I would expect it to take less time to dig my hole. So let's divide by 2. So the inverse proportion means on one side I'm using my scale to multiply, therefore on the other scale I'm using my scale to divide. Because as one thing gets bigger, the other thing is getting smaller. This is what we call an inverse proportion. Now the best way to do inverse proportions is to spot it, is to use the logic of the question to ask yourself if one thing's getting bigger, will the other thing get bigger or smaller? So we'll practice with a couple of questions. So if it takes four people two days to paint a wall, so we've got people and days, four people, two days. How long would it take if we had eight people to do it? So we're going to go to eight. So if I throw more people at a job, 
I would expect the job to take less time. So in my head I'm saying this is an inverse proportion. So if I'm multiplying this side by 2, I would divide this side by 2 and expect it to take one day with 8 people. Let's do a couple of more questions practice and that will be inverse proportions covered. You just need to spot when the relationship between the two parts is not going to increase both sides. You have to spot that when one side increases, the other side decreases. In this example, the time taken for passengers to check in a flight is inverse proportional. So this question is telling you that's an inverse proportion. And it's inverse proportional to the number of staff. So we've got time of 30 minutes when there are five staff. That's what this is telling me. So I know there's a relationship between 30 minutes and five staff. And I know I'm expecting an inverse proportion because the question has told me so. So how long will it take if 15 staff were working? So the 15 goes under the staff. So how did I get from 5 to 15? I've multiplied it by 3. Because it's an inverse proportion, I need to divide this side by 3. So 30 divided by 3 is 10. So if I have 15 staff, I'm expecting it to only take 10 minutes for passengers to check in. And that makes sense. The more people I throw at something, the less time that thing should take. Here's another problem to have a look at. It might be slightly more complicated, so we might need a calculator. But let's have a go and see if we can do it without. It takes an aeroplane five hours to fly from London to New York at 500 miles an hour. So we've got hours and we've got miles per hour and we know it's five hours at 500 miles per hour. Now how long will it take if the aeroplane flew at 600 miles per hour? So the speed has gone up so I can see that I'm expecting the time to come down. If something happens faster, if the plane flies faster, then I would expect the time to be less. So I've got an inverse proportion. It's clicked in my mind. I'm looking at an inverse proportion. So how did I get from 500 miles an hour to 600 miles an hour? Well, if we divide 600 by 500, we can knock off the zeros, and it's the same as dividing 6 by 5. So I've multiplied by 1.2. So on the other side, I need to divide 5 by 1.2. So I can see that it would take me 4.16 hours to fly from London to New York at 600 miles an hour. Don't worry about this decimal time. We will cover that in measures next week. And did you spot the recurring spot on the top of the 6? Because when I was doing the division over here, I could see I was constantly getting a 6 as my answer. So instead of carrying on, I could put 4.16 recurring. And that completes our learning outcome to understand and calculate inverse proportion. So what is an inverse proportion? This is a ratio where when one thing goes up, so when one of the sides is being multiplied, then the other side is being divided. And the best way to think of this is that if you throw more people at a job, then it takes less time. That completes this video. If you'd like more practice on inverse proportions or need more information, then please ask your tutor.